in the Hala Chambers on TVC News. I am TJ Su Adiri. And later on the program. We need to carry people that are economists and put them in charge of the economy. To hear his view on some legislative matters and other national issues. Felicitations and goodwill messages continue to pour in for the President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, on his 64th birthday. His colleagues were also at his residence in the federal capital to join him in cutting a birthday cake and celebrate with him. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64. Congratulations. Check it down. About 103 million Nigerians are living below the poverty line. And most of them are from the northern part of the country. And even in the northern part, at the fringes, Barno, Yobe, Jigawa, Kano, Katuna, Zamfara, Kebi, Chokoto. I believe that we have no reason to be that poor. Why? The government, and not only this government, even previous administrations, I think have not invested sufficiently in livestock development in Nigeria. I refuse to be convinced, and even if it is controversial, I, I, I hold that opinion, that government should not support livestock development because it is a private matter. Who can be more private than banking? Someone will set up a bank, collect people's money, chop the money, drown the bank, and then Amco will come and pick and put on the rest of, uh, on top of everybody's head. That is callous. Our people, if you have a problem in Sokoto, somebody in Rivers, in Boni, will be affected one way or the other. This poverty thing we are talking about, if it is in Sokoto or Borno or Yobi, the other people who may be enjoying uh, prosperity, they will still be affected. Maybe they would have been in a better prosperity or more prosperity. So we need to invest in livestock development. This is an industry that has a potential of over 33 trillion naira. And yet, the people in those uh, areas where the livestock are supposed to be are the poorest. Why, why, why should we be poor? I think we need to redefine our priorities, and this too is one uh, challenge that I think uh, uh, this administration would have to do uh, to attend to between now and when we'll exit, and the next administration uh, should be uh, focusing on this as well, amongst other matters. We were meant to close today, but... Speaker of the House of Representatives, Femi Bajabiamila, describes Senator Ahmed Lawan as a fine parliamentarian who has paid his dues over the years in the Nigerian parliament. He commended the contributions of Senator Ahmed Lawan to the legislature from 1999 and also his significant role as a principal officer in providing stability in the 8th and 9th Assembly. Speaker Femi Gbajabi Amila says, working closely with Senator Ahmed Lawan as president of the Senate for almost four years has been a worthwhile experience. For the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, he describes Senator Ahmed Lawan as a committed Democrat who has consistently demonstrated exceptional capacity in running the affairs of the Red Chambers. Honorable Idris Wase says the Senate under Ahmed Lawan's leadership has inspired hope for citizens because of his people-oriented policies, determination and commitment to the unity and prosperity of Nigeria. Senator Obasani, representing Kaduna Central, also sent his best wishes to Senator Ahmed Lawan on his 64th birthday. He describes him as the doyen of the Nigerian parliament because of his vast experience in legislative matters and his commitment to deepening democracy in the country. This will be the last time Senator Ahmed Lawan will celebrate his birthday as a lawmaker in the National Assembly and the last before the end of his tenure as president 
of the Senate. It's not looking too sustainable that we tolerate people from agencies of government to misapply or not even declare the revenues they collect. We can't continue with that. So for us in the Senate, we have decided that for the remaining part, we will continue to engage with our revenue generating agencies until we get better outcomes from them. And this is possible. This is uh, imperative. And also the concessions and the waivers that government has given to some uh, companies and the individuals maybe, we need to review that. You, certain things can hold on, uh, but certain other things, you have to review them. Now every corner count, because we are in a very, very difficult situation. So we review the, the, the waivers. Where a waiver cannot be justified anymore because of our present circumstance, then such waiver should be reversed or renegotiated. But definitely, we need to work hard to improve on the revenue generation and collection by the NDS and other uh, government uh, uh, agencies. I mean, how is Peter Obi a new hand? Somebody that was in the PDP, who ran, who ran for PDP, who ran for governor in the Labour Party. You know, the Labour Party is not a new party, it's not a fresh hand. He ran for governor, he was a governor. Under the PDP, people know him. And, and because of that, we cannot really say this is a new hand. Asiwa Jubola Ametinubu is a tried and tested and trusted hand. You will not carry a baby and give it to a three-year-old and say, oh, because this baby, this three-year-old, is no. You give it to somebody that is mature, somebody that is experienced, somebody that has had children to take care of your child for you. And Bola Ahmed Tinubu is the man with the experience. We have seen what he did to develop. A lot of people will try to discredit him. Lagos was already built, blah, blah, blah. We're not talking about he, he built Lagos infrastructure-wise. That is not what we're talking about. We are talking about economic development. We are talking about internal gener um, revenue generation. We are talking about building leaders for tomorrow. We are talking about people that have put their lives forward and built institutions and built people to make sure that Nigeria and their country runs well. And this is the same man that has a vast experience in the private sector, in the public sector, in his family life. So there is no way you carry a man like that. You do not hear Bola Metinubu being mentioned inside Panama Papers. Or did you hear his name in Panama Papers? He is a legitimate businessman who has worked with Exxon Mobil, who has established many viable businesses that are currently running, and even his children. If you look at Shei Tinumbu, you can see that he inherited his father, that he is also a very good businessman. You can see his wife, a pastor, a senator, a mother, our mommy, that she has been a, a, a cornerstone. I'm in the same committee with her in telecoms. I know her personally. She's a very wonderful woman. These are the kind of people. And we also need somebody that will also listen. Women should understand that now is the time that they are going to have a right and a voice in government. Because Bola Metinumbu is a person that gives women their right. He will allow her to talk. He will hear her. She will give advice. She will chip in. So women, if you remember during Babangida, his wife, Mariam Babangida, when she had the better life for rural women and all these types of programs, so these are the types of things that women should expect when Bola Ametinumbu wins the vote and election in 2023, February, by God's call. There's nothing like the economy has been on its heels. The whole world's economy has been on its heels. Everywhere there is inflation. If you go to the US, UK, Canada, Norway, everywhere there is inflation. Saudi Arabia, South Africa. I will say that our government has done well. The only place that may I will falter is that we need to look at the kind of physical and monetary policies that are coming out of the CBN. We need to address the issues in the CBN, MFLA especially. That is where the issue is. So the government has not failed, but we need to look at the monetary and the fiscal policy of this country that are coming out. We cannot continue, and I'm not blaming MFLA. MFLA is a private banker. MFLA is an accountant. We need to look at, we need to carry people that are economists. 
and put them in charge of the economy. But you will not carry. It's like fella's song, Taylor. Go they do carpenter work. There will be problem. I will not say I have, what issues do I have more than the inflation that Nigeria is suffering? You know, the price, prices are skyrocketing Nigerians. We need to have those things addressed. So apart from that, the government has performed very well. They have stabilized the economy. We, we did not, we, there was a slight um, depression at one point. Nigerian economy is not in depression. Right now, we are on a growth spot. So there is no way you can say the APC is not do well economically. We have problem with fiscal and monetary policy. And that is what needs to be addressed. And we need to put economists in charge of the CBN governor. And that is what Bola Ahmed Tenumbu is going to do come February 2023 and May 29 when he's elected. The solution is the security architecture. That's what we're already doing. More intelligence gathering, more awareness by citizens, more punitive measures by the culprits, for the culprits. And we need to stop negotiating with terrorists and kidnappers. That is all. And that is what the federal government is doing. That is what the APC is doing. The APC is fighting terrorism. The APC is fighting kidnapping. The APC is fighting banditry and insurgency and all types of insecurity. And the APC is doing extremely well. I commend the service chiefs for how they are trying, especially when the commander in chief changed the service chiefs. And now he has brought these ones that are performing better than the last ones and hold them accountable, give them performance targets, do performance reviews to make sure that everybody is doing their job. That is all. We have to become more creative as a country. We have the resources to get everything that we need. So there needs to be more creativity. That is not my um, purview. That is not why I'm here today. Um, that is the job of the executive. Like I said, I am a legislator. I'm in the House of Reps representing Taka Similar Federal Constituency. So it is very important that we narrow down uh, our discussions to that view. I'm a party member of the APC and a strong supporter, astute supporter of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. And I'm um, under the, um, there's the Bola Ahmed Initiative for Good Governance that is in Kano, that is run by my father, General Abdurrahman Bella Dombozo. And I am under that flag and platform. And there's um, Ali Abubakar, Abdullah Abubakar, that is also in charge of the coordination in Kano State. And that is where we are putting most of our strength to see that a strong leader emerges. Um, thank you very much, TVC, for your time and for interviewing me and for your questions. See, I have to go. Well, I see you, you are part of this team. The National Assembly is a representative of Nigerians. The executive are elected to implement. When we speak, we speak with the, voices, the voice of Nigerians. So what is of the best interest to our aggregated constituencies is what makes and informs our decision making. So if we make that kind of decision, then we have looked at it that by some way, directly or indirectly, then this is for the best interest of the country and this is what the country needs in order to implement policies and reach our mandate and even help the federal and the executive to reach their own mandate as well. So, I, You see, if you check back for, for the past 20 years, if I can recall, there's no federal government, there's no president that has implemented the budget 100%. It's President Muhammad Buhari that is the first to do it since we started in 1999. He's the first president since 1999 to achieve 100% implementation of the budget. So you can imagine all the gaps that have been left over the years. This man has tried in his own right with the challenges that he met. He could have done better. There are places that I would have loved to see him focus on like I would have loved to see electricity being generated like I would have loved to see him focus just on that okay let's get Nigeria electricity but of course nobody can do it all but nobody has ever done 100% implementation and I believe that this started with the APC and that when Bola Ahmed Tinumbu and Kashim Shatima take over with their ballot when they win in February 29, they will also continue to have 100% implementation, which will inject capital 
and create jobs in the economy and the country. Thank you. No, it will not. Because Bola Ahmed, see, as, as, like Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is widely accepted in Kano. You saw the crowd. That was an organic crowd. Those were voters that have PVCs. Those are students in universities. Those are civil servants. Those are housewives. Those are children of politicians. Those are children of the monarchy that came out en masse to support our candidate because of the love people have for him. Because people of Kano, we see Bola Metunubu as one of us. Now, he's somebody that has done a lot in Kano. Anything that happens, anytime we have any issue in Kano, Tinubu has always been there. Anytime. It takes him nothing. You see him there. In times of happiness, in times of sadness, in times of prosperity, in times of suffering, Tinubu has always been there for us in Kano. And we love him just like he loves us. And you saw it that day. The video is very clear that he is somebody that is popular and loved in Kano and that those people are shaking and they are afraid because they know that they have lost Kano. There, it could be errors from the registration process, you know. There could be errors from the registration process since, um, unfortunately, we have a lot of, a high number, in, I think in the country, in Kano, we have the highest number of out-of-school children, we have the highest number of illiteracy, um, illiterates and everything. So there are people that could go and be blundering when they go to register. And that could also cause a reduction in the numbers. But by and large, regardless of those circumstances, one thing I want you to consider, number one, even if there are people that come out in crowds that don't have a PVC, they have five or ten other people that when they talk to that, admire them and listen to them that have PVCs, that they will tell them vote. So it's not just because only PVC. There are people that don't have PVC that are also very important to the movement. And so because of that, like I told you, come February 2023, Bola Ahmed to Kano State, and not only Kano State, Nigeria as a whole, we are going to win and we'll get 25% across all the 36 states, that, even if the ones that we don't win. So Tenobu is already sold out. It's just like when you, when you talk about uh, MTN. You already bought your phone, you have your SIM card, you must buy MTN because you know that you have to reload your card. It is selling itself. They don't have to come and be advertising to you. Come and buy a recharge card because you know that this is the recharge card that you have to buy to put in your phone for your phone to work, for you to make phone calls. That is how Tinubu is. He is the recharge card for Nigeria. And every, he sells himself. His track record speaks for himself. Everything that he has done in Lagos State, what he has done to build people, to place people, and even the success of the APC and bringing the change and manifesting the change mantra in 2015. It's not about expectations from him. You are supposed to ask me what I will do to help him succeed. We will work diligently to make sure that we are not shamed. Many people are saying we cannot do it, we cannot do this, we cannot do that. We will show them that APC is the winning party, that we can do it and that we will take Nigeria to the promised land. You will get 100% Buhari is a, President Buhari is a party member. He is the leader of the APC. And maybe if you are not privy to this information, we actually have a set timetable for different states and cities where we go for rallies. And there are specific cities, because you hear people talking at, out of the side of their mouth, saying Buhari has not been appearing. For the, no, there are specific cities and dates that have been slated in those cities and states in the timetable for President Muhammad Buhari to appear with our candidates. Because he also has his executive function still to perform. So he cannot be everywhere and leave the affairs of the country. So everything is in order. He has 100% support from the president, from the villa, and from the party, and from the nation as a whole. Historically, we've always had violence. But the violence is in pockets. I remember what happened in River State in 2015 where there was this video clip. Some people were running around chasing people with machetes. Um, so 
they happen here and here, isolated pockets of violence will occur. But generally, there's going to be a smooth election because all the interested parties are making sure, and we are the ruling party, the security apparatus is in the control of the commander in chief. So we will make sure that everything is set in order to allow Nigerians to exercise their, their, their rights. Security officers also kill bandits. They kill them, they catch them, they kill them. So just because maybe they were lucky to kill one security officer, and the security agencies have been prevailing on them, parading them, even on your network, you've seen them. So it's, it's not something, the, the, the Nigeria is winning the war on insecurity and terrorism. It's been a wonderful experience. Um, I, I definitely enjoyed being here. Um, it gave me the opportunity to touch a lot of people's lives in terms of their education, in terms of their employment, in terms of infrastructure. I, I focused a lot on school, on education. So in my constituency, I was able to build scores of schools in different areas, especially in the places where um, they haven't, there are places that they've never had a school there. Because maybe most people that would come before, they would do their projects by the roadside. They want people to see what they've done. So what I did, I took the opposite approach. I went into the um, hinter lands of my constituency, the villages, some places I don't even have roads. Um, I built a lot of schools there. Um, I did a lot of programs to train them for entrepreneurship, give them capital to work with. Um, for the farming, I have a project on the Kachako Dambazao Ningi Road that is still ongoing, which because we do a lot of farming, so I brought that project to allow people to bring out their produce from the farms. Did a lot of fertilizer work, I mean, in initiatives to help farmers to produce more crops, to give them tools. So these are the types of things that I am um, empowerment of women to give them um, means that they can also support themselves. So I think overall, I, I enjoyed myself. I had a good time. I feel fulfilled, especially for the aspect that I was able to build over 30 something schools within four years, um, based on me putting a lot of my constituency projects towards that and being a member of the Education um, Committee on Education. Thank you to Professor Julius Ehonbere for supporting me in what I was trying to achieve, and I achieved that. And a lot of the students that were sitting on the floors, they did not have books. We were able to do all these things. So I'm very happy and satisfied, and I feel very fulfilled. Thank you. No, I am fine. I, I've done what I'm supposed to do. If I want to return, it's just four years, 2027, I'll come out, I'll run again. Maybe I can even go to the Senate. Like I said earlier, they should bring in technology. They should bring in mailing, voting. They should bring in QR codes. We need to sit back and these are things I'm even just telling you off the top of my head without thinking. So they need to sit down and get, look, if we keep on bringing people that don't have head and they don't have brain, and you remove people that have brain and you'll be bringing idiots, then we will not be able to move forward. But if we have people that can think critically, get solutions, people that are creative, we will not have all these problems in this country. Do you understand? So I think the, the, the INEC should sit down. Okay, we have this problem. Instead of you scrambling and shouting, how do we get it? We have 3 million PVCs that have not been collected. Sit down and say, okay, how do we distribute these things? How do we prevent these problems from happening? You have to be creative. You have to sit down and think critically. You have to be solution oriented. You have to look at the glass half full, not half empty. And then you solve all of your problems. That's what I'm saying. They need to introduce technology. Maybe your PVC can be on your phone. If you have a smartphone, they can send you with an OTP. You get a secure QR code that you know, okay, this QR code represents your, listen, when you go there, they scan your QR code on your phone. It brings you up. You've collected your card without going there. They can send it to you on your email. You print your, there are many ways. Send it to you via mail. You get a uh, night post has not been doing anything. You know, you, you do it securely. There's courier services now. Nipost is not doing anything. Bring back courier service into Nipost. Let them specifically be mandated to distribute people's PVCs. And you put in, look, it's about checks and balances. You cannot say that you will not do something because you're afraid somebody is going to counterfeit. You create checks and balances. Okay, somebody's going to counterfeit. How are they going to do it? And you check that.